We are now into part 3, which is responses to cyber attacks. I hope the first two sections have not been too much of a downer, that there's so much uncertainty. But let's assume that we can actually find a situation where there is a clear cyber attack act of war. Some armed attack which we are able to get an international agreement that this is something which is not acceptable. What then are the responses? Assuming that we can find out that determine that this is an actual cyber attack, an armed attack under international law, what are the responses that we can take? I also invite you to answer in the chat. Now we have another third party country, Goldland, where the Goldland government official declares that they know that it was Red Land that hacked Blue Land, but they cannot disclose their intelligence because they don't want to expose the Goldland capabilities. Otherwise, Goldland loses a spy. But Goldland is confident. Red land has hacked blue land. So if you are blue land, what do you do? There's all the different scenarios, right? That we had in the previous section. Talking out the banks, the hospitals, the water supply. Now if you are blue land, you can now hear from gold land a official declaration as red land that's responsible. What can you do? Who did it? A cyber intelligence firm, one of those cyber security companies, international ones, and other security researchers have linked the incident to a hacking group based in red land. So they say they can trace that the attack came from servers in red land country. They just cannot prove that it was the red land government that controls them. Because who is directing the hackers is an intel question rather than a technology question. So we can conclude that they probably weren't using uh, military computers to do it, They're probably using civilian computers, which would be a good way to hide your tracks. Who did it? Who launched the attack on Blue Land? Can Blue Land attack back? Again, we come back to this one, the NotPetya. Where do you think this came from? What would be a reasonable guess as to where this malware came from? If you think you can look at the screen and you can recognize, and a lot of people would have come to this conclusion, what would many people conclude is the source of this virus? Russia. That's a very reasonable guess because we see Russian characters there. But I want to talk to you about a briefing that I attended, a closed door briefing with a defense contractor. So I can't explain much details about who it was. But this defense contractor was basically showing us very proudly these online tools that they have developed and they are selling to, as he called it, uh, selling to democratic countries to use. Very easy to use tool. You just log in and any soldier can use these tools. They don't need to be highly trained hackers. So your ordinary troops should be able to be, you know, after attending a few lessons, uh, training, should be able to use these tools. You log in and then the tools will help you to find weak servers in the target nation. And then you can click on them with the drop down list. Which server do you want to enter? When you enter that server, which is uh, one of those weekly protected servers, then you also have a list, a menu to decide what malware shall I drop? Shall I drop a spying one or shall I drop a one that erases data? Very convenient, user friendly, right? Any soldier you should be able, after some training, should be able to use this. So I said, okay, this is great. You know, you've just created hacking tools that can be widely deployed by anybody. Okay, that's fine. The best part is it. Okay, now that you have 
deployed your spying tool or your tool to delete files now here is the place to deposit your false clues false clues yes they actually have a set of false clues for example they will plant a virus which contains language in Korean so it looks like it's a North Korean hacker or they will provide a virus which contains words in Chinese so it looks like it's a Chinese hacker and of course they've got a virus which contains words in Russian so it looks like a Russian hacker I said wait a minute said, yes with our tool you can make yourself look like any country's hackers I said, okay it is actually not difficult to masquerade as a hacker from another country it's almost as if they had put on the uniform of the soldiers of that country and basically gone into your territory. So, while it is reasonable looking at this screen to think that this is from Russia, we have to think about what is the possibility that somebody planted this to make us think there was an attack from Russia. Oh! So then what are the responses available? I like to use this framework which is developed by the US DOD, Department of Defense, the dime field, where you can try diplomacy, which is basically your diplomats now go and have arguments, they issue strong letters, your heads of state pick up the phone and make very stern phone calls. If you have their diplomats in your country, you expel them, that's the diplomacy way of doing it. Sometimes some of these things happen behind closed doors. If you don't want to spoil the relationship. Now mind you, sometimes when you catch a spy, the spy comes from what you might call an ally. So it's, you say, it's not nice that they are spying, but then that's what the big nations do. So, what can you do? And if you have a lot of trade with them, you have a lot of other interests, then maybe the approach is not to do it in public, maybe do it more diplomatically behind closed doors. Maybe, maybe that's it. There's an information, the second one, information I. Maybe you launch an information campaign, say, look, we have discovered that such and such a country is in our systems, you know, get everybody in the world to condemn them. Okay, that's one way, if you are willing to go public. Number three is military. Now, we know of one case where the military has actually launched an actual bombing raid on the hackers' headquarters, and that is Israel. So they send the Air Force to basically bomb the hackers' headquarters, and that's... Uh, very uh, extreme response that few other countries will try. Of course, they are already in a state of war, so it doesn't take that much to send the Air Force to go and bomb your hacker. Well, that's another option. But if you're not already in a state of war, this is something that could really escalate into something very unpleasant. So you want to really think about it. Do you put in the military? And is it proportionate? <clears throat> if they knocked out your computers, is it proportionate to then go and bomb? And are the hackers going to be in a military base? Or will the hackers be actually working out of maybe an office building? Hmm, this makes it much harder. Economic, you could have sanctions, cut off trade. You could have financial. Let's say you know that that country has... Um, Senior people with bank accounts, you can freeze their bank accounts, take other kind of financial measures, seize their assets. You can use intelligence, you can go and conduct intelligence operations on them. You can use legal methods, you can actually go to the International Court of Justice 
But then, you know, we come back to the problem of has international law been broken? And you also want to be careful because you don't want to be the one that's breaking international law by launching an attack when there is no international legal justification to do it. So these are the different options. The legal one is quite interesting. The US has done it by arresting, not by launching a, say, a response on the country, but putting out a warrant of arrest for the individual hackers. Because the hacking is against the laws of the country as a cybercrime. So when the US actually issued warrant of arrest for five uh, PLA officials, the generals, then that's going against the individuals, not the country. That's interesting. That's one way of dealing with it. It makes it painful for the individual hacker. But to the country as a whole, the attacking country might not care that much. So, how will you respond to something like this? Uh, you don't have breakout groups, so you can just go ahead and answer in the chat. Right? It's the same question that I raised earlier. I want to suggest that there's three questions before we launch a cyber counterattack. Which country is the target located in? Is it in Redland or a third party country? If it's a third party country, it's even more complicated. Because if you are conducting an operation in a third party country, then you have a sovereignty of that country to be concerned about. Just like if it were a military operation, you can't just go into a third country. Which is why there is a very problematic policy strategy of the US Department of Defense called Defend Forward. According to Defend Forward, if they, the US, said that they found Russian hackers attacking them using servers in Germany, the US wants to have the right to enter the Germany servers and take them down. At which point the government of Germany says, wait, what about my national sovereignty? What gives you the right to just walk into my servers in my country and take them down? Issues that need to be resolved. There's also the question of potential impact on civilians. Will civilians get affected by this attack? Because sometimes when you launch an attack, it doesn't just stay within the military target. Look at the North Petya. We don't know for sure what the original target was, but it spread around the world. Computers around the world were hit by this North Petya ransomware virus. And what happens if Redland proves or insists that they were not the attackers? Where is the proof that they are the attackers? Remember, Golan couldn't provide the intelligence. And all the cybersecurity companies can say that, okay, we traced it to the country, but we can't trace it to the government. So the government can deny. And if Blue Land launches the attack, Blue Land becomes the attacker. So the law of armed conflict acts against Blue Land now, and you escalate the situation. This is all problematic before we launch a cyber counterattack. So that brings us to the end of the third section, and in the last section, we'll talk about how the UN and ASEAN are taking steps to prevent cyber warfare with the use of law and norms 
and rules of behavior. I 